Hello beautiful souls. So today we are sharing in another lesson. We're moving right into the phase of the presence of love, knowing that I love you, Father, and I love your Son. I love you, Father, and I love you, Son. This is a wonderful lesson, a true call of the heart of love. The only true statement, really, that there is. <laughs> I love you, Father, and I love your Son. And since yesterday was the basis of forgiveness is the only gift I give, we are recognizing that once we give the gift of forgiveness, we do indeed receive it. And so it's the same thing here. When I give the gift of love, I do indeed receive it. And so we are recognizing that we cannot know God until we know our brothers, because in our brothers is God. And so when we recognize that I love your son, that means that I love myself as being your son, and I love all of my brothers and sisters as being your son, your child as well. So it's I love you, Father, and I love your son. I couldn't love you, Father, without loving my son, loving your son. And this is why forgiveness is so important in this process, because in order to truly love God's Son, we must forgive all misperceptions that we have placed in the way of the recognition that I love God's Son. And once we see in another the light of our Father's love, the light of our Father's child, we will know that that is us as well, because it is the light that is, it, that is one. It, it reflects back to us what we are, and we indeed are God's Son. So I love you, Father, and I love your Son. Beautiful declaration of giving today. So let's see what Jesus has to remind us of this love that we have for our Father and the love that we have for his Son. My gratitude permits my love to be accepted without fear. And thus am I restored to my reality at last. All that intruded on my holy sight, forgiveness takes away. And I draw nearer the end of senseless journeys, mad careers, and artificial values. I accept instead what God establishes as mine. Sure that in that alone I will be saved. Sure that I go through fear to meet my love. Hmm. And I think it's so important here to point out that to meet my love means to meet the love of God in all people and in all things. This is not a special love that is spoken of here. This is the divine holy love that is all inclusive and eternal. And so when we say, I love you, Father, and I love your Son, it is the same love that I have for my Father that I have for his sons, and thus have for myself, because we are all one. And so it is my gratitude alone that permits my love to be accepted without fear. So we can be grateful to God that we can love in this capacity, and this love has no opposite. For love is the eternal state of God's sons, and there is no opposite to this love at all whatsoever. So it is my gratitude. My gratitude permits my love to be accepted without fear. And this is ultimately what the acceptance of the atonement, the at one meant means, is that I'm going to accept the love that God has for me and for his sons. And so I'm grateful to God that this love is even possible, and I accept this love. I accept this atonement without fear, without not sin. And thus I am restored to reality at last, the reality of God's kingdom of love, the reality of heaven. This is the reality that we all share. This is the true reality that never dies, that never fades, that never changes. And this is where we are all meeting, in this meeting place of our reality of love. And all that intruded on my holy sight of this perfect love and perfect reality was what for, is what forgiveness takes away. So this is what we are kind of extending on from yesterday, that even though we may look out into our world and see judgment and hatred and we, we see, you know, um, vindictive people and hateful people, it is all of these ways of seeing them that are the blocks to the perfect love that we have 
for those souls inside those bodies currently. And so it is forgiveness that lifts all of those thoughts and judgments of hatred and, and pain and, you know, vengeance and whatever it may be, grievances. Forgiveness releases all of that and cleanses our holy vision so that now we can look out on the world and only see God's holiness there, only see the love of God there. And so this is what we are asking for today. And so we are realizing, especially since being on less than 298, we indeed are drawing near the end of senseless journeys. That we no longer need to journey and venture off away from God towards mad careers that we absolutely hate and bring no happiness and onto artificial values that we really don't want. The things and the trinkets of this world is not what we want. So we are drawing near to the end of senseless journeys, mad careers, and artificial values, all of which take us away from God. I accept instead what God establishes as mine. Sure that in that alone I will be saved. Sure that I go through fear to meet love. So how perfect is this? I accept instead of all those mad careers and artificial values what God established as mine. So what God has given me. And what God has given me is this perfect love that I can give and receive and experience as a complete reality. And it is in this, in what God has given us, in what God has established as mine, that I alone can be saved. Right? This is reminding me of an earlier lesson. I think it's lesson 77 when it's saying that I am entitled to miracles. Miracles are what God established as our own. Love is what God established as our own. Giving this love to our brothers is what God establishes, established as our own. And in this alone, I will be saved. In what God has given me, I will be saved. It has nothing to do with what's going on in this world, but what God has given us truly does save us so that can extend into the world. And this will allow us to truly walk through fear to meet love. So we're not doing this by ourselves, but we're doing it one hand with the Holy Spirit, one hand with Jesus, continuing on with the hands of our brothers and sisters. And this truly is the interlocking chain of forgiveness, the interlocking chain of atonement that brings us to that reality of love that we can share in because it's our reality for all eternity. So in this deep gratitude of the love that we have for our Father and for his sons, let's conclude here in a prayer. Mm -hmm. Father, I come to you today because I would not follow any way but yours. You are beside me. Certain is your way. And I am grateful for your holy gifts of certain sanctuary and escape from everything that would obscure my love for God, my Father, and his Holy Son. I think this prayer needs repeating over and over and over again so that every day is a new day that we say, Father, I come to you today. Let today be that new day. I come to you today because I would not follow any way but yours. And we get to realize as we take ourselves on all these separate journeys, going down to the mad careers, the artificial values, the special relationships, we realize that all of those are paths that we have taken ourselves, and we realize that all of those paths only lead to suffering. So now we're saying, I follow only your way, Father. I would not follow any way but yours, for you are beside me. Again, I'm not alone. I'm holding hands here. You are beside me, and you are beside me because you are in my brothers and sisters. You are beside me because you are in my mind. And so this is very, very literal here. And certain is your way. Certain is the way of God. And I am grateful for your holy gifts of certain sanctuary. Certain sanctuary. Not, oh, maybe if you've done this or that right. No, 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 no. There is no right and there is no wrong. The holy gifts that God has given are certain sanctuary. They are certain. And it is a sanctuary. Sanctuary of peace, of love and escape from everything that would obscure my love for God, my Father, and his holy sons. So it is in the certain, certain space, in the certainty of the gifts that God has given us, that we escape from everything that this world may obscure, may block, to the awareness of our love for God, our Father, and his holy sons. There's no separation here. There's complete unity. We all join in this together. 
So now instead of denying our experience and our responsibility here, we are accepting our responsibility for how we see the world and allow ourselves to recognize that I can see the world through the eyes of love and not fear, and in this love I have an equal love for my father and his beloved sons. And that allows my love to be all-inclusive. That's not singled out as special for a particular someone or particular children or particular people in this, or, uh, in this world. It is all-inclusive for everyone equally. Everyone is included in this love space. And so it is a beautiful reminder. And, and I say this every day to all of you, that I love you. And when I say I love you, I mean with the deepest love that our Father has given the all-inclusive love for each and every one of you, whether we've talked, whether we've not talked, whether we've met, whether we've not met, whether we've, you know, just passed each other's names on the Facebook wall or a YouTube wall, you know, whether, whether we've never connected before and this is the first time, whether I've known you for years, it is irrelevant. Whether I grew up with you, it is irrelevant. I love you all equally and the same because I love our Father and I love His sons and we are all equal. I cannot love someone more or less than another. This goes for my husband. I love him as much as I love all what? of you. <laughs> I love him as much as I love all of you. <laughs> and he does the same. <laughs> so in conclusion, I love you, Father, and I love your son. I love you guys. Have a beautiful, blessed day. Mwah.